Welcome back. Before we begin, I just want to remind you, if you are enjoying this podcast at all, I would really appreciate a review right here on Apple or a subscribe here on YouTube or on whatever platform you're listening in. That way, the more reviews we have, the more people we can get this message to and create transformation on the planet. Your help is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And thanks for listening. So today I am inspired to speak about how to become a psychedelic integration coach. There are many psychedelic integration training programs out there right now. Um, I am friends with pretty much everybody who runs one of these programs. They're all really great people. I would like to give my personal opinion on becoming a psychedelic integration coach and what is needed versus what is not needed. Very often, this topic can be controversial because there are different theories as to what it takes to become a psychedelic integration coach. The first thing I will preface this discussion (laughs) with is that there is no actual regulation in the psychedelic integration coaching world or business or field, whatever we might call it. So there is no one body of um, people or a regulation or regulating body overseeing psychedelic integration coaches. So essentially, it is a completely new um, space, industry, whatever we might call it. And the people who have created these training programs are people just like me. And they're actually people just like you. So I will begin by saying that, which in itself might be a little controversial. Um, But the reality is, yes, they are just created by regular people. And, um, you know, maybe some of these people have had a lot more experience with psychedelics and integration, and that makes them capable and qualified to create coaching programs or coaching training programs. Um, So that being said, they're all amazing people, (laughs) really. Um, Like I said, I've interviewed many of them. I'm friends with a lot of them. I've even taken some of their programs myself. Incredible people out there, and I am blessed to be part of this incredible world. Um, But I just like to preface that to shine uh, a reality on the world that we're in, which is the, the coaching world in general is not regulated. Um, Even the ICF, which I think stands for International Coaching Federation, which kind of claims to certify certain coaching programs, it is actually just a group of people or I think maybe a person. Um, It's a federation that is actually owned by someone. So it's not government regulated. It's not like a governing body. It's people that make money by certifying things. So let's just be honest here and name what is actually true. So it's not that I'm here saying anything's right or wrong. I'm just naming the reality of the world that we're in as the coaching industry is not regulated. And that's that's fine. I am actually not bothered by this. I have had some amazing experiences with coaches and I've had maybe a couple bad experiences, but mostly amazing. And it doesn't really matter that it's regulated to me. So that's just, you know, how I feel. Take it or leave it. Um, when it comes to psychedelic integration, I have an opinion that you don't necessarily need to have a certificate because a certificate is just a certificate, right? Um, And this goes for any kind of coaching. To be a life coach, you don't need a certificate. To be, um, you know, a business coach, you don't need a certificate. But you do need to actually be able to help people, right? Or else your business is not going to last long to begin with. So there's a reality to it. Someone asked me many, many years ago, Beth, what is your credentials? And it's funny, I've been at this a long time, and I have quite literally, and I'm I'm a Sag. I don't lie. This is honest to a fault. I have quite literally had one person ask me what my certification is in. And I said, well, that's funny. Um, I've started and grown three business and before businesses. And before that, I helped start and grow early stage tech startups. And before that, I actually managed large cross-functional teams and ran companies in the multi-million. So you know, that's my credential, number one. And number two, I have invested probably nearly, I don't know, three to $500,000 in 
various forms of business training while I grew my three businesses and continue to constantly be investing in my growth and my skills in order to better serve not only my clients, but better serve myself. So that is, those are my credentials. And if I didn't get my clients results, I would actually not be in business anymore. So there's a reality to it. By the way, if you want to learn more about me, you can go to the testimonials section on my website or about me section on bethaweinstein.com. So when it comes to becoming a coach or a psychedelic integration coach, um, here's the thing. While you do not need a certificate because no one says that you need a certificate, yes, I think it's great to go get a certification, right? Why not? But I think what's actually more important than a piece of paper that is given to you by a regular person after completing their program is your own integration work. It is not so much about going through the four-month to 12-month long integration coaching training program. It is about what have you been doing in your own psychedelic integration yourself. So I personally have been working with psychedelics since I was 14 years old and I'm in my mid forties. That is a while. I have gone deep into psychedelics, very, very deep uh, over the last 10, 15, probably I should say 20 years. (laughs) Um, It's, it's been a lot of my spiritual and personal development journey, this path. Um, so for me, when I started personally doing integration, um, what I would call like formal integration was about, uh, oh my gosh, let me count. What year are we in? It was about like eight years ago, seven, eight years ago where I first discovered, um, somatic therapy. And I'm very blessed to have worked with a somatic therapist who also was on the medicine path. And when I say the medicine path, I mean, sacred plant medicine. She worked with ayahuasca and um, sacred mushrooms and also um, even poured ayahuasca through her her church. So, and she was a therapist as well. So I'm blessed to have had someone who really understood this path from the get-go. And I personally have been doing nonstop integration since day one, since then. And And I have worked with many, many psychedelics and had very deep journeys and gone to the jungle in Peru and done many dietas. And there's nothing wrong with saying um, or or doing only a few psychedelic journeys or doing hundreds. Um, There is no one person out there to say, hey, you can't be an integration coach until you've done 50 journeys or 100 journeys or 25 journeys. There's no one that says that. And I don't believe there is a magical number, right? Like, what is it? The person that has taken um, 100 hits of acid is more qualified than the person who's drank ayahuasca five times? I don't know. Who's to say what's right or wrong? Um, But here's the thing. I do believe if you're going to help people with their psychedelic journeys and psychedelic experiences, yeah, you have to really understand the psychedelic experience. So, That is one thing I would suggest. But also, here's the thing. If you are looking to, let's say, really only help people with integrating, say, microdosing, then maybe it's okay that you haven't taken um, 100 hits of acid or gone to do dietas in Peru. You know, this is something you have to think about is who are you called to help the most? Where's your passion? Where's your um, your deepest truth and what lights you up the most? So follow that first. I do not believe that every psychedelic integration coach needs to have done, you know, mushrooms 50 times or ayahuasca 25 times or whatever it is. So I personally have only worked with something like LSD maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 times in my life. Because I worked with it when I was younger, and then I actually swore it off until 20, I forgot what year it was, till 2014. Um, And I actually am still not really that called to it because it's not really my path. My path is more around plant medicine, psilocybin, ayahuasca, um, the animal kingdom. Uh, I have no problem working with synthetic. So when I chose that program, I basically chose it based around what worked for me, what I wanted to learn, and the intention behind the program, which was really just for my own knowledge and understanding and my own personal healing journey. 
So that's what I would suggest to you is really review the programs that interest you. And here's the thing. If, if these certification programs aren't really calling to you, then maybe you can consider something else. So there are a lot of different somatic therapy programs, um, trauma healing programs, um, embodiment training, embodiment coaching. I personally don't believe that you need any kind of certificate, but you know, the more of your own integration that you do, um, let's say for me, let's say it's somatic therapy. Somatic therapy worked for me. So if I go do some somatic therapy training or go work with a somatic um, therapist or coach for, you know, for a while and maybe work with my own integration coach or do some other form of integration that really helps you along your path, you know, when you've been doing this long enough and really understand how you are able to do your own integration and actually get the benefits from the medicines and the psychedelics, when you go through that journey, then it gets you to a place where you are able to help people, even if you don't have a certificate. And that's where it gets a little controversial because certain people out there on the internet don't like that I say that you don't need a certificate because, of course, they have certification programs themselves. But the reality is a certificate does not make you qualified, period. Um, a certificate is nice. A training program is nice. But what really makes you qualified to be good at psychedelic integration coaching is going through your own deep integration process yourself. And for some people, that might look one way versus another. So one of my clients who is an incredible breathwork practitioner and has studied and trained and he also works with a lot of medicine and has done a lot of integration and been through a lot and come out of it. He offers psychedelic integration coaching, but does he have a certificate from so-and-so's program? No. But he has done this, 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 this. And that's his path that's worked for his own integration. Therefore, he's here and he's able to help people on this path here to get to where he is now. And for him, what's really worked is something like breath work and embodiment training and certain somatic um, coaching and somatic therapies and um, whatever it is, like communication with the plants and setting intentions and groundedness. So if that's his, if that's his path and that's worked for his integration to get him from here to here, that's where he's qualified to help people from here to hear. So, you know, again, I'm not here to poo-poo any integration certificate programs. Again, I will repeat, I think they're all great. Like I said, I could really recommend many of them, most of them. And the reality is a lot of my clients have gone through these programs and some have said really great things. I'll be honest. Um, there's also been some negative things said about a few programs. So there's a reality to it. It's like anything you're never going to be 100% happy with everything. There's always going to be take what you love in the program and leave the rest and make it your own. You know, it's like if you really, um, if you go through a training program and you love this 75%, but then maybe 25% doesn't resonate with you and what you're all about, then that's okay. Um, but here's another thing. Like if you're looking to help people integrate ayahuasca, but then the person you're working with is teaching mostly about MDMA and ketamine, then you have to ask yourself, like, is this the right training for you? Do you know what I mean? So that's like a reality to it. Or if you feel that your own personal journey has been shaped by particular modalities and that's what's helped you, then that's something to really run with and maybe go deeper into. So for example, one of my past clients really um, got a lot of benefit out of microdosing and purpose coaching and um, sensuality and embodiment coaching for women. And so she went really deep into that. Oh, and she also studied hypnosis. So she studied hypnotherapy, microdosing. She actually did go through a certain psychedelic training, but it wasn't integration coaching. Um, she worked with, you know, women's coaches and embodiment coaches, somatic therapists. She did all of her own work. And then she was able to bring this program out there with and without a cer certification. You know what I mean? So that's where I, I really encourage you to 
look deep into your own path and your own journey and what really lights you up and inspires you and also what's work for you. And then keep going with your integration. Keep going with your own training. I personally believe that anybody working in the transform transformational realm of coach, healer, um, the psychedelic integration, psychedelic facilitator, um, anything in this realm, you always have to be doing some kind of, of, of your own healing and growth in order to be serving others. So it never ends. There is not a place where I just quit because I'm good, because there's always the onion layers. We always have more. Um, and of course, it's not about running yourself into the ground. It's not about taking, you know, eight different trainings at once to quickly hurry up your career. It's about embodying what you're here to learn and give back to the world, embodying your unique medicine. And this comes from your own path of your own psychedelic integration itself. So um, the couple people out there who've criticized when I, when I say you don't need a certificate have also claimed that I go around saying you don't need to do any of your own psychedelic integration work, which by the way, I have never said, and I have recorded every single thing I've ever said publicly um, because it's either on Zoom or here on my podcast or on my summit. So I have the proof that I've actually never said that before. The reality is I personally don't believe, okay, you go have three mushroom trips and now you're qualified to help people. No, I've never said that. And if anything, I've actually, um, I usually uh, dissuade people from jumping into something as deep and intense as psychedelic integration or psychedelic facilitation or whatever it is around psychedelics if they haven't done a deep amount of work themselves. So another thing to consider is, and I've said this to my clients for many, many years, and I continue to say it, is you have to really be honest with yourself. Okay, maybe you're qualified to help people get from here to here. That much. But are you qualified to help people go from here to here yet? You know, um, if someone has deep level sh sexual trauma and you haven't really done your own deep level healing of your own sexual trauma, is this something that you're really qualified to help people with now? Mm, I don't know. I'm not here to judge, but that's where you really have to ask yourself. Um, this is where I've said to clients, look, I personally would never coach or help someone with something that I'm not capable of doing. And you have to really go deep into ask like, okay, well, what am I capable of doing? Because the reality is you are capable of helping people get from here to here. But if you're here, then you're not able to help people get to here. So you have to get to here before you're able to help people get there. Um, so here's where imposter syndrome really creeps in. So then you might be saying, well, but am I even qualified to help people get to here? You know, so it's like, yes, from here to here, from 100 feet to 300 feet. Yes, you're qualified. You have to embody that first. But if you're at 300 feet now, are you really qualified to help people get to 800 feet up the mountain? You know, so this is what I mean. It's like you really have to have an honest talk with yourself and also realize that you might be feeling like an imposter and that's okay. But you have been given your own life journey up until where you are right at this very moment where you are now. And if you look back on your life journey and ask yourself, well, how did I get through A, B, and C and X, Y, and Z? And what worked for me? Then you are able to help people get from A, B, and C to X, Y, and Z, just like you helped yourself. So there is a reality and a truth to that. And that is, of course, where a lot of people suffer from like the imposter syndrome or not feeling worthy enough or not feeling good enough. And that's where people are driven to go try to get 25 different certifications before they can help people. But the reality is you can help people now. It is true. You can help people now. You just really have to be honest with yourself about wh what you're qualified to help people with and how far you can take them. So what happens with me, and this actually does happen once in a while inside of my business coaching containers, is let's say some really deep trauma comes up, which, you know, this actually hasn't happened in many years, but let's say there's some deep level trauma that comes to surface. 
I am not trained to go that deep with people. I do go pretty deep and I am trained in um, certain modalities, but there is a limit I have. So what I do then is I am always radically transparent with my clients and I say, look, here's where I'm able to help you. I'm able to help you get from 100 to 300 or 100 to 700. But if you need help going from 700 to 900, and that involves some deep level trauma that I am not qualified to help you with, that is where I'm very resourced and I make sure that they are resourced to send them to other people who can help them. And that is all you have to do with your clients. So I have a list, which is on my resources page on my website, of somatic therapists who I know and trust, who I've worked with myself psychedelic integration coaches who I know and trust, um, training programs, healers that I've worked with, other kinds of coaches, um, intuitives. I'm, I forgot what else is on there. <laughs> uh, you know, some other business resources. But as long as you're able to be radically honest and transparent with not only your clients, but with, with yourself and be resourced enough to have them have the support, like send them to the right person if you are only able to help them go from point A to point B, but now they really need to go from point B to point F. You know what I mean? So that's where I do believe you can help people. If you have done a certain level of your own inner work and your own journey, then you can help people on their journey too. And When it comes to the next level, that's where you really have to ask yourself, well, okay, if I want to start helping people with this really intense deep level trauma, I, number one, need to send them other resources. And two, what is it that I need to learn and what is it that I need to train in to be able to help people get to this next level and heal and process this deep level that I do not feel fully qualified to help people with now? So this is where it becomes very important to tune in to both your true self and the depths of your truth of what you're really capable of doing and helping people with while also having your imposter syndrome in check. And of course, this is a delicate balance between being aware of what it is that you feel ready and capable of handling and then also maybe pushing your limits a little bit, but also having a very truthful talk with yourself about what you can and truly can't help people with. And again, to me, the best thing you can do is really have radical transparency and honesty with not only your clients, but yourself. This, I believe, is very important in the psychedelic space more than ever. And it has been discussed on numerous other podcast episodes, which you can reference, including one of my favorites, uh, the recent one with my friend Natasha, where we talk about um, what it is that is necessary to be, uh, you know, really high integrity psychedelic facilitator. And this is one of the things that came up was really having your ego in check and having an honest talk with yourself of what you truly are and are not capable of holding. So just to recap this episode about becoming a psychedelic integration coach. So there are many amazing training programs out there. There are more popping up every day. I have a list of a few that are run by friends of mine who I personally trust. They are on my website under bethaweinstein.com slash resources. You can check them out there. There are some other training programs popping up very soon. Um, Even one of my amazing clients is putting together a psychedelic training program for pretty advanced people who are, um, you know, probably already trained in other modalities like somatic therapy and for therapists and healers that really want to go deep with psychedelic integration and psychedelic space. So be on the lookout for that. But just to recap, you know, I would say ask yourself if you have really done your own depth of integration work yourself and to what level you are capable of helping people. And yes, you know, if you're feeling called to a training program, go for it. But ask yourself, you know, am I ready to help people at this level now at, you know, like climbing the mountain a hundred feet, you're able to help people at a hundred feet or lower. But if you're at, um, 
a hundred feet and you're trying to help someone who wants to get up from 700 to 800 feet, maybe that is an opportunity to have resources where you can refer them out to someone else. So again, um, ask yourself some honest questions about what you're capable of, get the proper training to actually learn how to get clients because it's kind of like one of these things, like even doctors who go to med school, it's like you can practice over and over and over in the school, but until you're thrown into the real life scenarios, you don't really know what's going to happen. And you can't really get the training with coaching people in something like psychedelic integration until you've actually started to work with the clients. So the best thing you can do is start to build your business, start to actually work with people who you can help and keep growing from there while also investing into the trainings and the certificates and the programs to help um, deepen your craft and deepen your work and to be able to better serve on a higher level. That is what I do. I am continuously training, learning, and growing as I also continue to help people. And that is the moral of this story. And the, the whole point of this episode is that Yes, you can help people now where you're at in, if you're, you know, at a certain level where you're really honest with yourself about what you're capable of and you can continue to grow while you invest in the trainings, while you grow and get more and more training. So it is a fine line, but in my personal opinion, a certificate is not what makes you worthy and valid to then go help people. Because Lord knows we know there are people who have zero experience with psychedelics or very little who are getting certificates and then they're going out and helping people. So is that really the answer is just a certificate or is it actually your experience of your own internal integration process? Again, I try to come from the place of non-judgment. So this is really for you to decide. But there is a reality to any of these training programs, not just psychedelic integration, but anything in coaching or healing. And one of the best things you can do is do your own inner work and your own integration and your own healing on yourself so that you can better serve your clients and others around you. So there is a fine line and my whole goal and my message is about not having to wait and wait and wait just to get some certifications to be able to help people because the reality is people need your help now. And if you're 500 feet up the mountain and there's, you know, 50 people below you who could use your help, why not help them today versus waiting for three more years or five more years or even one more year to then go build a business reach people and start making a difference in their lives. Why wait? It's an all hands on deck scenario on planet earth right now. And I do believe that anybody who's feeling called to this path of helping others, making a difference in the world and creating transformation on the planet really needs to just step up and start doing it. And there's also a reality is that everybody, every human alive on planet earth, we're all human and we do make mistakes and we do have our ups and downs and there is no perfect coach out there. There is no perfect integration coach. There is also no perfect person who's training you either. And so there is a reality to the, the fact that we're always learning and growing. So it is not about waiting until you are then ready because really, when are you ever ready? When is, when is that point? And you have to constantly be asking yourself that. It's like, are you going to be ready when you're 85 or 93 and on your deathbed? Like, when are you truly ready? And the readiness has to really come from having this radical talk with yourself and being in touch with your own worthiness and doing enough of your own work to know, okay, I'm at 500 feet. I can help everybody below me at 499 feet and below, which is hundreds and or if not thousands of people. And that is the truth. And that is what I believe and take it or leave it. (laughs) I'm here. If you need anything, reach out if you need support. And again, if you have any questions about some of the integration training programs that are out there, I can guide you to um, the one that might be good for you because they're all slightly different. Everybody has a different way of teaching and a different methodology and a different background. And really the best thing you can do 
is do your due diligence and do research and really listen to your heart and ask yourself what it is that you want to be learning and growing in the most so that you can better serve and make a difference in the lives of those who need you. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really love a review or share this podcast with others. I do want to just shout out now that I am hosting a Psychedelic Sacred Medicines and Purpose Summit again that is coming out this September. Stay tuned. Be on the lookout. We would love to have you join in. This is going to be an exciting new series uh, with new speakers and just tune in and In the meantime, keep sharing your unique medicine in the world and reach out if you need anything else. Lots of love.